The biggest dream of the young Lin Zhu was to somehow traverse into the TV. She wished to inhabit the bodies of the female protagonists in the TV shows she would only ever be a female protagonist. Enjoying the undivided attention and adoration from the male protagonists and second male leads, she wanted to stay there forever. This yearning was particularly intense and apparent on those nights when her parents just had a big fight, leaving shattered crockery strewn about the floor. Her mother was the chief doctor at the county hospital, professional and dominant. Her father, once a prison guard, got fired because he drank and gambled during his night shifts and later became an auto mechanic. Ashamed, her father directed all of his frustration at her mother, yet submerged himself even more in his drinking and gambling. Often with red tear-filled eyes, her mother would clean up the broken pieces on the floor. Why don't you divorce him? A young Lin Zhu ran out from her room to ask her mother. It's all because of you. Her mother glared at her angrily. It is all because of you this was a line often on her mother's lips. Whenever singled out and humiliated by the grandparents who favored male grandchildren at their house, her mother would point at her and say, It's all because of you. Every time when they had a terribly heated argument that left the house a mess, in the midst of cleaning her mother would look up and yells at her. I've been wanting to divorce him a long time ago, it's all because of you. When she failed her math test and the teacher summoned her mother to the school for a conference. On the way home her mother would swat her hand away when she tried to hold her, saying, I am so humiliated and it's all because you're not working hard enough. It seemed like all of the misfortunes that befell her mother were because of her. Yet a ten-year-old Lin Zhu couldn't understand why. Why? Did she do something so horrible? As a child, Lin Zhu heard a famous saying, Art comes from life, and in her eyes, the person who said this was merely talking nonsense. What is life? Life was full of endless bickering and fighting as soon as she stepped into the house. Life was the maths exercise book with sloppily copied characters, being torn up and thrown on the floor by her teacher in front of the whole class. Life was the bragging class prefect dividing the classmates into small groups and not letting her join because the teacher called her stupid. Whoever the teacher called stupid would be nailed to the pillar of shame and treated as a severe offender. But TV dramas were never like this. In her class, those little girls swinging their braids and contending for superiority only knew how to scare others with the teacher's words. In her eyes, these classmates could only amount to the villains in the dramas. In the classroom, the head teaker kept lavishly praising the class representative sitting upright in the first row, her face stiff from the rigid smile. Bored, Lin Zhu sat at her desk, counting the seconds mentally, waiting for school to be over. She wanted to race back home to her TV, switching it on and watching her favorite dramas. She felt like she could kick all those hateful faces she encountered during the day fly away, becoming the protagonist herself. Later, due to her dreadful results for her end-of-year exams, and her mother noticing the overheated TV and misplaced remote control more than once, her mother decided not to pay for the internet connection anymore. The summer without the TV was practically tortuous for her. But soon she discovered a new world. Browsing in bookshops. She learned to uncomfortably shift to the teen novel's shelf, quickly pulling a book out and slipping it into her previously selected big thick tutoring book, then squatting in an inconspicuous corner reading it secretly the whole afternoon. After reading numerous novels, she started to write stories in her new candy house notebook. A cold, aloof superstar falling in love with an ordinary schoolgirl, a gallant young master rescuing a damsel in distress, running away from her marriage. The female protagonist must be ordinary and kind, just like her, rather than being overly functional and loud like the class prefect from her primary school. Outside her room echoed the sounds of adults arguing and teacups smashing, while inside she let her tears fall plop by plop onto the colorful candy house stationery, wishing the hero in her letters could reach out from the paper to take her away. But after a night of pleading under her blanket, the only sound she heard was her parents slamming the door as they left for work in the morning. The empty room was eerily silent. Her hero could only live in her heart. After the start of junior high school, Lin Zhu noticed the changes that weaving stories all summer brought. It seemed she didn't find it difficult to write narrative essays anymore. She even found the model essays the teacher taught somewhat childish. During the midterm exams in the first term of their seventh grade, when her form teacher saw her essay, the first reaction was to call her to the office and ask seriously, Tell the truth, did you write this yourself? She nodded. The form teacher said nothing more and coldly handed the paper back to her. Lowering her head, she saw a bright red 48 on her paper. 
Out of a full score of 50 for the essay, she had scored 48. That day, her essay was distributed as an excellent model essay to the whole grade. But the form teacher didn't praise her, not at all, because of her distrust in poor students. Life in junior high school was not noticeably different from life in elementary school. Lin Zhu remained quiet, and with her terrible grades, she played the role of an invisible person who could be easily ignored in the classroom. Her parents still quarreled terribly deep into the night as if she, diligently doing her homework in her room, didn't exist. Did she really exist? She asked this question many times in her mind. Until one day, she finally gave herself a definite answer. She did exist. Because she fell in love with someone. He was a boy from the next class, his name was Yi Feng, a very common name. But he was not an average person. During the combined physical education class, she sat alone on the gymnastic bars in the corner, her legs dangling as she quietly observed the good-looking boy playing basketball on the adjacent court. He was strange, or rather, special. It was said that he was an excellent student, ranking first in the whole grade in the midterm exams. But he was also very attractive. Not only was he academically good-looking, his character was also very active. Among the crowd, he seemed to be no different from those noisy and playful boys he was arm in arm with, but Lin Zhu knew he was different. Because his grades were better than theirs, and he looked better than them. Such shallow thoughts made Lin Zhu despise herself, but she had to admit that such a dazzling boy, who suddenly appeared in her mundane life, was so good at capturing her attention, and was so suitable for her to take a liking to. She tilted her head slightly to look at the sky above, which seemed to have been soaked in light blue ink. The square of the sky, surrounded by the teaching buildings and fences around the playground, could look so different in different people's eyes. She suddenly felt that she had transformed into a heroine of a romance drama at that moment. Her superhero had barged into her real life unexpectedly. She no longer read romance novels secretly, she began to watch him secretly. When she was pretending to flip through a book during a break, she would prick up her ears to eavesdrop on gossip about him. She would deliberately go to the water room at the end of the corridor to do something as simple as getting water, just so she could occasionally catch a glimpse of him passing by the door of the next classroom. She would also look in the direction pointed out by a girl in the corridor who suddenly shouted, Look, there's Yi Feng. It was a conscious look, yet it felt more like an instinct. So, when her essay was distributed to the whole grade, she fell into an unrealistic fantasy. Especially when she saw a few top students from other classes run to their classroom door to find out who she was, she began to anticipate non-stop whether he would also come to find her. Would he suddenly appear in front of her, excitedly asking, Are you Lin Zhu? And then, smiling, he would wave at her, saying, Nice to meet you, I'm Yi Feng from class 9. Nice to meet you. As she thought about this while seated at her desk, she was suddenly jerked from her thoughts by her deskmate's loud hey. Lift your foot, you're stepping on my paper. Huh? She came back to her senses, not hearing clearly what her deskmate has said. I said, the deskmate rolled his eyes at her, lift your foot. Oh. She looked down, seeing a math paper under her foot that she unknowingly stepped on, and quickly lifted her foot to apologize softly. I'm really sorry, I didn't see it. Sick. Her deskmate picked up the paper and threw it onto the table, picked up his basketball and left. But she still heard his low curse and saw the disdain and contempt in his eyes. Every day, the boy who didn't do his homework and only played around, wasn't abusive and rude to everyone. He was just like this with her. With the girls in the class who were either exceptionally beautiful or academically excellent, he was incredibly sycophantic. She couldn't understand why the class teacher insisted on arbitrarily pairing quiet, introverted girls with naughty, ill-behaved boys. The teacher seemed to think that he was bestowing a great favor and golden opportunity for these boys to reform but never bothered to ask if the girls were willing. For instance, if she was willing. The bell for the break rang, and most of the students in the class had gone. She was accustomed to going to play during the break alone, always managing to go out at the last minute so that she would stand and exercise directly at her spot when she arrived at the playground. This way, she could avoid the awkwardness of being alone during the free time before. She wished she had a friend too. But in the class, the cliques were clearly defined those who studied well played with those who studied well, and those who were lively and noisy played with those lively and noisy. And she, seemingly belonged to neither group. It seemed like the girls in the class had all forgotten that apart from the people in these two little cliques, there was still her. That Lin Zhu of your class writes very well in her essays. I've never heard of this person before. 
she overheard a boy from class one discussing with a boy from her class on their way back from the break. Who? Lin Zhu? The boy thought hard. Is she in our class? Possibly due to vanity, to showcase her pitiful presence, she purposely walked past the two boys, speeding up to leave them behind, leaving a clear trailing image of herself. Suddenly, the basketball in the hands of her classmate rolled down and brushed past her ankle. I'm sorry. She bent down to help him pick up the ball, but the boy got to it before her. He easily picked up the basketball beside her foot without a glance at her, hurriedly apologized, and seriously said to his good buddy from class one, I really don't remember having a Lin Zhu in our class. She stopped in her tracks, watching as the two boys' figures gradually disappear from her sight, suddenly feeling quite pathetic. A sense of enormous loss and powerlessness invaded her heart about Yi Feng. She forced a smile, helplessly bitter. She should have been clearer. In reality, that Yi Feng who was so far away from her was but a dream she would never have a chance to touch. How could he possibly be her hero? Have you heard? Yi Feng went off topic in his midterm essay exam and only scored 32 points. Their Chinese teacher was almost enraged to death. Most importantly, Yi Feng handed in his paper half an hour early. By the end of school, the thick twilight cast an orange hue over the entire teaching building. It was nearly six in the evening by the time Lin Zhu finished her duties. She packed her bag, took out her thermos to go fill it with hot water from the only functioning tap on the top floor of the teaching building, and overheard two girls gossiping about Yi Feng in the corner of the stairs. No way, he went off topic in his essay and still ended up first. Doesn't he leave room for others to live? I heard their Chinese teacher penalized him by having him copy the excellent essay distributed today ten times, and he wasn't allowed to leave until he was done. Uh, the one written by that girl from class 10? What's her name again? I really suspect she memorized this essay somewhere and wrote it down. Who knows? Yi Feng of our family is truly pitiful. There Yi Feng. Lin Zhu suddenly wanted to laugh. She brushed past the two girls, climbed the stairs to the sixth floor, and filled her thermos bottle with hot water. After she finished filling her thermos, she noticed a dazzling light emanating from an old disused room opposite her. Instinctively, she peered through the loosely closed door gaps. Just a glance, and her heartbeat skipped a beat. Inside the room without lights, under the dim evening glow, sat a boy on an old desk with a game console in his hands. His handsome yet spirited facial features rushed into her eyes, appearing both familiar and foreign. It was a face she had secretly watched from afar many times, the face she had sketched in her mind countless times. It was the face that could make countless girls' hearts race at just a glance. But why would a good student like him play games sneakily? What are you doing? The Dean of Instruction suddenly passed by, a loud yell startled her, and the water in the thermos spilled onto her hand. She exclaimed from the burns, but still instinctively took a step forward, blocking the cracks in the junk room door behind her. Everyone's cleared out, why haven't you gone home yet? Teacher, I just finished my duty shift, it's a bit late, I'll leave right now, she explained, standing still, making no move to leave. You're not leaving? The Dean of Instruction questioned, furrowing his brows. Teacher, I spilled the hot water I just drew. She glanced at the water boiler's display. The number was still rising. I'll wait a little while longer, until the water boils, then I'll fill it up and leave. All right, head home soon. The Dean of Instruction didn't suspect anything else, instructed her and then turned to walk down the stairs. It wasn't until she watched the back of the deacon disappear entirely from her field of vision that Lin Zhu finally let out a sigh of relief. But then, she suddenly came to her senses and wondered, why did she help him out? What if she had made a mistake and the person inside wasn't him? Besides, he and she were basically strangers. What if one day someone checked the surveillance in the junk room, discovered today's incident, how would she explain? Hey, classmate, while she was in the midst of her thoughts, her shoulder was suddenly patted from behind. She turned around in response, bumping into a brilliantly smiling face. For the first time, she was so close to him and clearly saw his appearance. He had fair skin, lips that were neither deep nor light, and under his slender eyebrows, his amber eyes sparkled with bright and pure light. Thank you just now. What is your name? Which class are you in? Lin Zhu, class 10. She was a bit nervous, her voice slightly trembling. A hint of surprise flashed in the boy's eyes before he exclaimed, So you are Lin Zhu? You're Lin Zhu? Nice to meet you. I'm Yi Feng from class 9. The boy's distinctive profile subtly concealed in the light and shadows, 
left her unsure whether it was reality or illusion. That composition you wrote almost killed me. A? Eh? She reacted, suddenly not knowing how to respond. The boy spoke again before she could reply. I'm Yi Feng from class 9, are you going home? Shall we go together? Okay. How is it that you write essays so well? I can't write essays at all, and the subject I'm weakest at is Chinese. Our Chinese teacher today asked me to copy your model essay ten times, and I didn't accomplish anything all day, my hand almost broken from copying. Lin Zhu, I'll remember you. Yi Feng rambled on, his words disjointed, but it made her less awkward and a little more relaxed. She didn't know why, but when he said Lin Zhu, I'll remember you, her heart suddenly trembled as if touched by a warm hand. Actually, essay writing isn't that difficult. Just read a few essay books, then write an imitation, and gradually you'll get the hang of it. I also read many books, and gradually learned to write. Actually you need to read essay books? That's too much trouble. The boy drooped his head, then suddenly had a bright idea and looked at her, his eyes bright and keen. Can I borrow the essays you wrote before? He continued. That way, I don't need to read books. Okay, I'll get it for you tomorrow. That's great, thanks a lot. He naturally patted her shoulder, leaving her startled. She didn't know that Yi Feng's home was on the same route as hers. Only that he cycled along the outer ring road, so she had never met him before. She walked a long distance side by side with him. Why do you play games in the storage room? After hesitating for a long time, she finally gave in to her curiosity. Yi Feng took a look at her and laughed, shrugging his shoulders and saying, I just want to play games every day. The teachers at school won't let me and my parents won't let me at home, so I have to find a place to play secretly. But aren't you a good student? Good student? Yi Feng laughed even harder. Does having good grades make one a good student? Isn't that the case? Having good grades is really different. Lin Zhu felt like she had gone off topic, but she still expressed her grievances and feelings. Students with good grades are favored by teachers and respected by classmates. Just like you, teachers always commend you in our class. Everyone in our class has heard of you, they know you're really amazing. That's right, I am indeed amazing. Yi Feng turned his head and looked quite pleased with himself, so having good grades is very useful. He added, even doing something as disobedient as playing games at school is more audacious. Lin Zhu nodded, feeling that there was great truth to his words. Do you know what it feels like to be number one? He suddenly asked her, his tone more like muttering to himself, it's this kind of I'm the best. None of you can compete. Anyway, it feels incredibly good. Yi Feng slowly tilted his head back, seemingly deep in thought as he looked at the twinkling fragmented stars against the pitch black night sky, a slight smirk curling on his lips. Such a jerk. Lin Zhu muttered under her breath, but nonetheless she followed his gaze towards the faint starlight buried beneath the night veil. A ripple seemed to suddenly stir in the still waters of her heart that had been calm for so many years. He said, good grades come in handy. After getting home and having dinner, Lin Zhu sat at his desk in his room, brought out all the excellent essays he had written since the start of the first year of high school, and meticulously copied them onto blank essay test paper in block-style Chinese characters, working until nearly midnight. After copying the essays, she massaged her sore arms and shoulders and started on her homework for the evening. She stayed up all night without sleep, and she wasn't sure if it was due to the lack of sleep. Her heart throbbed with a rhythm that was unprecedentedly intense and quick. In the silent darkness of the night, for the first time, accompanied by the pounding of her heartbeat and the image of him jumbled in her mind, she felt her existence so vividly. Existence. It's as if the stars in the pitch black night sky on the way home from school tonight suddenly fell and landed on her head without warning. It's as if she suddenly got some kind of passcode that can win in one move. As long as she keeps practicing according to the passcode, she can climb out of the valley and let everyone see her strength. She didn't want to be a transparent person unknown to anyone anymore. She wanted to be the protagonist for once. A protagonist just like him, proud, admired by people, radiating light from head to toe. The next day, after Lin Zhu handed the essay paper to Yi Feng, she did not hear from him again. A month passed, and he did not come to look for her in their class again. The messy class N, with its life filled with contradictions and interludes, was suddenly coated with an inexplicably sense of loss. She seemed lost. But whenever the school bell rang, or when she opens the workbook assigned by the teacher, she seemed to be possessed, even her gaze towards the teacher and the workbook became sacred and earnest. Yi Feng's words echoed in her ear like a mantra. 
He said, good grades are very useful. In the words of their primary school homeroom teacher, she is surprisingly dumb, good for nothing. Maybe what worried the teachers and parents more is that she won't be able to get into a good high school or college in the future, can't find a good job and won't have a good future. Is a good future really that important? Compared to the future, she probably wanted more was a better present. No more being ignored by the teacher, looked down on by classmates, or scolded by her parents, that's all. She didn't want to be a useless person anymore. Useless, she didn't know what persona she could adopt to be friends with Yi Feng. Why did she want so badly to be friends with him? Did she like him that much? She couldn't find a precise reason but remembered clearly the rhythm of her heartbeats the night she copied essays for him. The girls in the class, the ones who were friendly with Yi Feng, were either academic achievers who could compete with Yi Feng in exams or outgoing beautiful goddesses who would initiate chats with him. She pondered over it and felt it was more fitting to aim towards the first group. At least, it seemed relatively fitting. Lin Zhu worked hard for half a term, finally coming in 40th in her grade and 8th in her class in the final exam. However, only the top 30 in the grade could enter the first examination room, which was still out of her reach. She spent the entire winter vacation in a gloomy mood. However, her parents were boasting to relatives and colleagues because she had made it into the top 10 of her class. It turns out, she could be this discontented. Throughout the vacation, she almost stopped sneaking into the bookstore to read romance novels. Even the TV shows she used to be addicted to suddenly lost their appeal. She was addicted to reading and solving problems, as if the dry black and white pencil words could blossom into a flower. With every page she read, with every problem she solved, she would think of him. Because she always thought of him, studying didn't feel as tedious and resistful to her anymore. Why had she changed so suddenly? Was it because she liked him? Why hasn't school started yet? It's been a long time since she last saw him. When the second semester of the seventh grade began, Lin Zhu noticed that on her way to and from school, she often saw Yi Feng riding his bicycle. The school put out a notification, saying that due to the large volume of traffic on the outer ring road, for safety reasons, students were no longer allowed to bike to and from school there. She calculated the timing of leaving home every day. Just being five minutes earlier than before, she could often bump into him. Putting on her clothes and shoes against the clock every day, all for a fleeting silhouette. However, it was this silhouette that could provide her with a whole day's motivation and a good mood. Day after day of going to school and getting off school, only he was something fresh. Therefore, every day became fresh to her too. What she didn't expect was that the midterm exam of the second semester of the seventh grade was moved from the teaching building to the laboratory building. The laboratory building classrooms were large, and the capacity of the first examination room expanded from 30 to 60. In a room filled with 60 people, she held a cushion and water cup and, along with the crowd of students blocked at the entrance of the examination room, waited silently for the invigilator to open the door. The students were chatting in small groups, while she stood alone in the corner. Suddenly, she saw Yi Feng in the distance. In front of the window across from the girls' restroom, he was happily discussing something with Zhu Jockey, the top student in their class. She had never seen the usually expressionless Zhu Jockey also having such a brilliant and happy smile. Sure enough, everyone liked him greatly. With his good looks, excellent grades, and likable personality, who wouldn't like him? But she had nothing, not even a single thing she could be proud of. Among the crowd, all she wanted was to make herself invisible. She couldn't even muster up the courage to look him in the eye, let alone greet him, chat or discuss issues like other girls did. Suddenly feeling a little sad, she regretted why didn't she put in a bit more effort. Why was she only ranked 40th in the grade, not 2nd or 3rd? If that were the case, she might have some confidence and could boldly go to him to discuss some random topics. Just like Zhu Jockey, who was just average in every aspect except for her exceptional academic performance. Just five minutes before the exam started, the proctor hurriedly arrived and unlocked the classroom door. After she announced that she was late and didn't have time to post the exam numbers, and that everyone could just sit wherever they liked, the massive 60-person classroom turned into a chaotic mess. Lin Zhu felt like she was pushed by the turbulent crowd to a seat near the window. However, it didn't matter where she sat. She calmly placed her seat cushion on the chair, lowered her head to slowly rummage for stationery in her bag, and suddenly caught a glimpse of a familiar-looking bag on the seat next to her. It looked like Yi Feng's bag. Her heart missed a beat. If Yi Feng really sat next to her, 
wouldn't she be chosen without warning as the lucky one by the god of fate? With this thought, her heart started to beat chaotically. Classmate, classmate, a strange boy suddenly waved his hand in front of her. Can we exchange seats? I want to sit next to my Yi Ji. He pointed to the seat near the wall in the back row. The seat I took is perfect, very quiet. Can we swap? She shook her head furiously, looking at the boy with pleading eyes, as if to say, please, can't you not swap with me? The boy saw her reaction, pursed his lips understandingly and signaled it was okay, but muttered as he walked away. You girls are really something. The moment you see Yi Feng, you're glued to your spot. You'll regret it. Wait till you sit next to him and you'll know how annoying he can be. She was still digesting the boy's words when, turning her head, she caught sight of Yi Feng coming towards the seat. Before she could decide whether or not to greet him, the boy had already cheerfully waved at her. Hey, Lin Su, you're sitting here? What a coincidence. How to describe Yi Feng? Whenever Lin Su thought seriously about this question, the first thing that always came to mind was his pair of eyes. His eyes were bright, sincere, and enthusiastic. They always sparkled and dazzled her, making her avoid his gaze subconsciously. She felt like he was seeing right through her. For some reason, every time Lin Zhu looked into his eyes, she would feel an uncontrollable panic. Yet, she couldn't help looking back. Those crystal clear eyes reflected his straightforward and passionate personality, so frank and confident, so different from her own personality. Hmm, she nodded with a smile, responding softly to him. The examination bell rang and the proctor started distributing the papers and announced the beginning of the exam. After distributing the papers, she instructed the students to write their seat number and examination number accurately on the answer sheet and test papers. She then stepped off the podium and started checking each student's papers for any mistakes. Lin Zhu did not expect to be scolded for writing her seat number wrong. There really are some silly people. The proctor walked to her side, looked at her wrong seat number, and her face changed. I have mentioned several times that the seat numbers should be written according to the previous examination rankings, can't you understand? The proctor berated her sharply. There was a sudden stir in the silent classroom. The students lifted their heads, curiously looking towards the girl who was being criticized. Embarrassment hit Lin Zhu all at once. She felt the gaze from those around her heating up her cheeks. Indeed, she was just as the teacher described in Itwit. Even though she was lucky enough to be placed in the first test room, she was still a fool who couldn't even fill out a seat number correctly. Being pointed out and criticized for being a fool seems to be an entirely justified thing. But at this moment, it felt different. At this moment, the boy she liked, the boy she didn't want to leave even a bad impression on, was sitting right next to her. The more she thought about it, the more embarrassed she felt, so she sneakily peeked at Yi Feng's reaction. Seemingly noticing her gaze, Yi Feng suddenly turned his head and met her eyes. She instinctively wanted to avoid his gaze, suddenly afraid of seeing any expression on his face. But before she could look away, Yi Feng suddenly smiled at her. Not just at her, Yi Feng also smiled at the proctor. What are you smiling about, Yi Feng? The proctor frowned and asked confusedly. Yi Feng scratched the back of his neck and replied with a grin, teacher. You missed one more, there's another one here whose brain's not working. He pointed to himself and said, I also got the seat number wrong. The proctor was amused by his response. You still joke about it knowing you're a blockhead. Hurry up and fix it, or you won't have a score. Change, 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 Yi Feng said awkwardly. In the classroom, the students' attention had shifted from Lin Zhu to Yi Feng. Everyone laughed, and Lin Zhu joined them. Dum dum, Lin Zhu muttered under her breath, but her eyes suddenly felt warm. Because he had helped her out, a wave of warmth sprouted in her heart. He seemed like a really nice boy. She thought, her lips unconsciously curling into a small smile. However, after the exam started, Lin Zhu couldn't find the heart to smile anymore. After each exam, she finally understood why the boy who wanted to swap seats with her said those words. Yi Feng really was annoying. Hey Lin Zhu, are you wearing a watch? What time is it? Lin Zhu, can I borrow your eraser? Do you have a tissue? Could you please lend it to me? Do you have the Chinese textbook with you? The ancient poetry test, can I take a look? When Lin Zhu was answering questions, she couldn't stand others talking to her. Each time she spoke, her thought process would be disrupted. Besides, she was already slow at writing, and with Yi Feng, who was constantly chattering asking for the time and borrowing things, her answers got more and more flustered. 
and this Yi Feng always finished his papers at least half an hour early for each exam. The proctor was used to it, but still came over with a stern face and knocked on his table. Yi Feng, you always interfere with others after finishing your own exam? Then she turned to Lin Zhu and said, You just focus on your own, don't mind him. She didn't want to pay him any heed, but she couldn't resist him when he called her name with a smile on his handsome face, making her soften every time she wanted to reject him. Of course, there were other reasons too. After the first Chinese exam, the proctor came over and chatted with Yi Feng. Suddenly she glanced at Lin Zhu and asked, Has this girl ever entered the first examination room? Which class is she from? Before Lin Zhu could answer, Yi Feng rushed to answer the teacher's question for her. He said, Teacher, her name is Lin Zhu, she's from the 10th class, she's particularly good at writing essays, they were distributed to the entire grade, and I'm sure you've heard of her. After the second math exam, several top students from his class came over to cross-check answers with him. While they were chatting, he would suddenly introduce her. Let me introduce you. This is Lin Zhu from the 10th class, the one who's particularly good at writing essays. Before the last geography exam, when she was cramming, he would suddenly lean over, flip through her textbook and ask, Which chapter are you reviewing? I'll tell you what the key points are. Don't look at this page. Look at this one. This will definitely be on the test. Whenever he leaned over, he would unconsciously get his face very close to hers, making her cheeks flush. Even though there were so many high-achieving students in the first examination room that he was close to, he always liked to come and find her. And every time after an exam, when she inevitably took out her textbooks and notes and pretended to study hard, she was always hoping that no one would distract him by chatting or cross-checking answers. She was always waiting for him to come and find her. By the time the next exam started, he would still ask her for the time and borrow things. She would still tell him the time and lend him stationery without irritation. Two days passed like this, a little annoyed, yet somewhat happy. As she walked home from school with her bag on her back, the corners of her mouth couldn't help but slightly curve upwards. The cool summer evening wind tousled her hair and also her heart. Did she like him? She had never met such a restless boy before. Always grinning from ear to ear, chatty, narcissistic and loves stirring up things. But just because she accidentally happened to sit next to him for two days worth of examinations, her average ordinary life became much more chaotic and bustling because of his involvement. He was like an unexpected intruder who had disrupted her world, destroying the inherent order and balance of her world. Yet it seemed like she did not dislike this feeling of disruption. On the contrary, she was somewhat infatuated. The thoughts of a teenage girl entwined into a mess, but one thought became clearer and clearer in her mind. Suddenly, she really wanted to rank first. Suddenly, she wanted to get closer to him. Lin Su didn't know how she had survived the past half semester. All she knew was that she had used the dumbest method to study hard. During free activities at recess, she would stand alone at the back of the class reciting English words. Even if everyone around her pointed and murmured about her abnormal behavior, she suddenly didn't care that much anymore. She could even smile casually when her male deskmate intentionally gave her a torn test paper and then continued to bury her head in the test paper with a pen in her hand. For some reason, she wasn't as easily upset as before. Perhaps it was because she was called by the math teacher to solve a difficult problem on the board, and she actually solved it successfully. Among the teacher's compliments and students' sighs, the music unexpectedly rang out outside the classroom. It was Zhu Song's Lu Zhu Moon, the favorite song of the school radio station announcer Yi Feng, Maybe it was when the boys in the class yelled my brother Yi is so awesome when the music suddenly stopped. The careless boy apologized to the teachers and students who were in class in the broadcast and accidentally touched the play button. The music sounded again and the boy was in a panic trying to close the button, but he pressed it several times without successfully turning it off. She laughed along with her classmates. The moonlight of Lu Zhu was just right, shining on her heart. The next time she saw Yi Feng was during the midterm exam in the first semester of the second year of junior high. She, with the first place in the class and the second in the entire grade from last semester's final exam, sat behind him. Although she was sure he already knew her final exam score, she was still secretly curious and kept guessing what he would say when he saw her. She sat upright at the desk, pretending to read the translations of ancient poems in the Chinese textbook, but her heart had long since floated to the door, extremely excited to welcome his arrival. Finally, she caught a glimpse of him walking in the door. She buried her head even lower subconsciously, trying to calm her somewhat messy heartbeat. You've underplayed yourself, Miss Lin, 
Yi Feng said as he walked to his seat, threw his bag into the desk, and turned to ask her as he sat down, how does it feel to rank first in the class? She laughed and, mimicking his gesture, lifted her head slightly, boasting, feels amazing. Yi Feng pursed his lips and patted his chair back, saying arrogantly, just satisfied with that? It feels even better sitting here. I'll try harder next time and experience it then, Lin Zhu replied with a smile. Perhaps due to staying up late to study till past midnight the previous night, Lin Zhu felt hazy during the first test on Chinese language. She yawned as she wrote, her eyes welling with tears. She tried her best to tell herself to take a break once she finished answering the Chinese language questions. After two hours, the bell rang and the invigilator announced time was up. The first seat of each row collects the answer card. The second seat collects the answer sheet, shouted the teacher. When Yi Feng stood up to collect her answer card, she was half a sentence away from finishing her composition. She hastily handed over her answer card to Yi Feng and quickly ended her composition. Once she has put down her pen, the student behind her poked her back asking her to collect the answer sheets. So she quickly picked up her own test paper, stood up, turned around and started collecting the papers from students behind her. After finally collecting all the papers and handing them over to the teacher at the podium, she noticed Yi Feng, who had collected all the answer cards, standing at the door talking confidently to a student from another class. Why does he always seem so energetic? It's as if he never feels tired. Only sleeping for about three or four hours, Lin Zhu is battling against her droopy eyelids, she is extremely sleepy. Half-closed eyes, she walks back to her seat, barely laid down for a moment. Suddenly, she hears Yi Feng yelling her name loudly. Lin Zhu. She raises her head in a daze, seeing Yi Feng looking at her with a face of mixed laughter, holding a Chinese test paper in his hand. Suddenly, Lin Zhu realizes that she seems to have forgotten to collect Yi Feng's paper just now. Be honest, did you do it on purpose? Yi Feng laughed with a sense of helplessness, teasingly asking her. Sorry, sorry, Lin Zhu expresses her guilt thinking about the supervising teacher who has walked far away, she quickly got up to get his test paper from him. I will give it to the teacher for you right away. You don't need to, I can do it myself. You should get some sleep now. You look so tired, don't you want to take the next subject? He said. Lin Su's heart softened. Although she was the one who made the mistake, he didn't show any anger. Not only did he not blame or lose his temper with her, but he also noticed that she was very sleepy and let her sleep first while she intended to rectify the situation. Thinking about this, Lin Zhu suddenly lost her sleepiness, subconsciously raised her eyes to look at the door. Yi Feng happened to walk in from the door after delivering his paper, and as his gaze met hers, the corner of his mouth raised into a smile again. Did you stay up all night last night? He asked. Lin Zhu shook her head. Don't forget to collect my paper for the next subject. He warned her threateningly on purpose. Lin Zhu smiled and nodded. Lin Zhu did not expect that in every following exam, Yi Feng would always tirelessly remind her not to forget to collect his paper. He always finished his paper half an hour ahead of time, after completing his exam, he hummed a tune and twirled his pen, looked around out of boredom, then he would lean his body back, with his back tight against the chair, he whispered to her, don't forget to collect my paper later. The problems had Lin Zhu hard pressed, hearing this, her pen shook slightly, she gently responded, I know. Yi Feng. During the physics exam, the invigilating teacher happened to catch their little actions, glaring at Yi Feng, questioning, What are you doing instead of checking your paper? What are you whispering about? Lin Zhu sighed softly, as expected, every time she sat next to him during an exam, she would inevitably get caught up and noticed by the invigilating teacher. Teacher, she forgot to collect my paper after the last exam. Yi Feng defended himself with an innocent look, explained, I am just afraid that she would forget again, so I was reminding her in time. Really or not? The invigilating teacher was obviously skeptical of his words. Really teacher, you can ask her if you don't believe me. Yi Feng said. Lin Zhu helplessly touched her forehead, seeing the supervising teacher coming down from the podium. She had read the physics question in front of her three times, yet she still couldn't figure out how to solve it. She suddenly started to wonder if the test paper was printed incorrectly. The teacher walked to her desk, not to question her, but to give Yi Feng a knock on the head. You're always stirring up trouble, disturbing the discipline of the exam room every time. If you don't settle down, I'll invalidate your paper. Yi Feng looked aggrieved and lay down on the desk. Lin Zhu suddenly felt like laughing, and the supervising teacher was right next to her. 
She raised her hand and asked, Teacher, I don't know if there's a mistake in the printing of this question on the test paper. Can you help me take a look? Hearing her words, the teacher turned around and frowned at the physics question on the test paper. I'm a Chinese language teacher. I don't understand this either. Lin Zhu bit her lip in frustration, just about to say thank you, teacher. She suddenly saw Yi Feng straighten up from the desk promptively, turning around to lean in, eagerly asking, which question do you say is printed wrong? I've finished it. I can show you. Before he could finish his sentence, the supervising teacher pressed his head down, pushing him back into his seat. So he drooped again. Don't mind him. Look at the question carefully again by yourself. It shouldn't be printed incorrectly. After the teacher finished speaking, turned around and walked back to the podium. Lin Zhu's gaze slowly moved from the black pencil words on the paper to the fluffy back of the boy's head. The corners of her mouth unconsciously curved, feeling a certain kind of unspeakable joy in her heart. He is really noisy. He's always bustling about, showing up everywhere, loves to meddle whilst wearing an amused smile. He doesn't follow the rules and always causes disturbance. But he possesses a certain magical power. It feels like as long as she is close to him, she can forget about all the things that make her unhappy. Although it's very very hard to get close to him. But she is increasingly sure that she really wants to get close to him. Really wants to, wanting to always stay with him. After that exam, Yi Feng often came to class 10 to find Lin Zhu to borrow her English notes or the essays she wrote in composition class. He also casually asked about how she did on the last question of yesterday's math class exam and how many questions she got wrong on today's geography quiz and so on. Lin Zhu felt that Yi Feng's strong desire to understand her learning progress was due to some misconceptions about her abilities. It seemed he mistakenly regarded her as a competitor, as a beast eager to snatch his first place. In reality, she didn't have such capability. She worked so hard, studying every minute and second, just to hold on to her place as the top student in her class, to become a friend worthy of sitting next to him during exams. How would Yi Feng, blinded by hubris, understand this though? The former top student Zhu Jockey underperformed in two exams, falling out of the top ten in the grade. Now Lin Zhu has gradually become the new favorite of the teachers, the object they love to praise. No longer does the boy sitting in the back row voice out such words as who is Lin Zhu? Is she really in our class? Her male deskmate also started being polite to her. The motivated girls in class took the initiative to invite her to do morning exercises, carrying exercise books to consult her for answers. Students sitting in the first row next to the door during recess would often turn around and shout, Lin Zhu, Yi Feng is here to see you again. Yi Feng is here to see you again. She would walk to the door in a compose amidst the envious and gossipy expressions from the girls in the class. She would get embarrassed when Yi Feng chased her asking, Are you okay? Your face is so red, and also secretly break down a piece of honey candy in her heart, sweet to the point of blooming. Though his visits to her always inevitably ended in discussing studies. But with more time, when they become more familiar, when she becomes even better, perhaps they can start talking about other things. She secretly had her hair cut into the currently popular hairstyle with bangs, learned to apply sunscreen and lipstick, no longer refused to wear the baby collar dresses bought by her mother. She quietly asked him at the bottom of her heart, Have you noticed these changes, Yi Feng? Lin Zhu felt that the excellent grades of being the top student in class became a beautiful disguise for her, tightly wrapping her awkwardness, timidity and insecurity, and deeply hiding them away. As long as she wraps herself tightly in this guise, and wraps tightly, she won't be seen through, won't be despised by others. With the increasing number of times she ranked first, the number of times her parents argued also became less and less. Whenever her father was ready to make a scene after drinking too much, her mother would scold. You had better quiet down and not disturb Zhu's study. Surprisingly, her father would indeed be silent, mumbling, my daughter is promising, and obediently crawl into bed to sleep. Her mother was also less likely to say it's all because of you to her. Even those uncles and aunts who used to look down on her and always speak sarcastically, now push their own children to her side, their faces beaming with smiles as they say, quickly ask Lin Zhu, see how she studies. Not all love, even from parents, is unconditional, let alone others. Looking at her mother's long-lost smile, sometimes she feels fortunate, sometimes she thinks she is quite pathetic, pleasing. Even if these waves of closeness and friendliness emerged naturally as she became better, she still felt as though she couldn't grasp these things, like they were mirages. Then what about Yi Feng? She was always working hard to play a role that wasn't her a friend who was worth his while. 
If one day her disguise was stripped off, revealing her naked true self, would he still care for her then? To fall for someone was such a complex and difficult thing, yet she was unwilling to let go. It turned out that falling for someone could make a person so greedy. The third year was coming soon. Every major or minor exam score and ranking, along with the frequency and count of Yi Feng coming to see her, became the strings pulling her emotions. Even if she was bent over homework and test papers all day like a numb and senseless puppet, there were still people and things that could manipulate her. Recently, the most nerve-wracking event for her was that the experimental middle school in the city relaxed its admission policy, allowing students with more than 800 points in the middle school entrance examination from each nearby county to study at their school. The experimental middle school, a cradle for high-talented students, unlike the county's first and second high schools, which produce a peaking university student only once every few decades. Which top student in a small county town doesn't want to go to the experimental middle school in the city, with better educational resources? She looked at the ranking of the last monthly exam, still the second in the grade, but only got 780 points. Above her name, Yi Feng's score was 827 points. Such an obvious break in scores hadn't bothered her before. But Yi Feng, he would definitely go to the experimental middle school, right? A single line of admission policy, like a cliff, sharply creating a gap between her and him. What would it be like if she couldn't see Yi Feng after they went to high school? If he goes to the experimental middle school, where there are so many talented students, what if he falls for another girl? If he gets into top universities like Peking or Tsinghua University and keeps pulling ahead, what if she can't catch up with him? She has to get into the experimental middle school. Even when her head teacher told her up front that this opportunity was prepared for Yi Feng, asked her not to give herself too much pressure, she obediently nodded. Even when her classmates asked her, do you want to get into the experimental middle school? She modestly shook her head and said she wasn't talented enough. Only she knew, the ambition hidden deep in her heart was glaringly bright and hot. She had to get into the experimental middle school. The first hurdle was the physical education entrance exam. She had been weak since childhood, and her PE scores were terribly poor. Although it wasn't too hard for her to get a passing score, she was aiming for the experimental middle school. How could she afford to lose points on something as trivial as PE? The PE entrance exam was scheduled for the last two days of April. A week before the exam, the physical education class was rescheduled for class 9 and 10 together, with two PT sessions held one after another. The physical education teacher allowed the students to practice freely, and they were encouraged to improve in areas that they were weak in. As soon as the class was dismissed, the girls in the class huddled together in groups and went to gossip under the shade of the trees, while the boys rushed to the basketball court with their balls in tow. She stood still, watching as Yi Feng had already changed into his light blue sports jersey, rallying several boys from classes 9 and 10 towards the basketball court. Fretting over physical education grades had never been his concern. He won first in his grade group for the long-distance run during last month's spring sports meet. They were indeed different. She sighed to herself and walked alone to the track by the sports field. Striding forward, she set off on her run, lap after lap. When she ran, she always found herself short of breath. Her mind was fuzzy due to the lack of oxygen, yet her thoughts grew increasingly complex. Lap after lap, her throat became drier, her nasal cavity began to ache, and her strides became smaller. Don't stop, she told herself silently. Lin Zhu, if you can't reach for minutes and five seconds, you won't make it to the city laboratory school, and Yi Feng wouldn't like you. Was the four minutes and five seconds really that important? Could simply surpassing that time frame gain her admission to the city laboratory school? Win Yi Feng's affection for her. However, she indeed didn't stop. She kept running, the entire two physical education class periods. When the school bell rang, the students dispersed and headed towards the teaching building. Now that she was alone, her tension dissolved. Her legs gave way beneath her, and she collapsed onto the bright red rubber track. A burst of heat spread from her neck to her cheeks, a trace of blood infiltrated her mouth from her throat, the veins on her forehead throbbed violently. Beads of sweat rolled down from her forehead along her neck, soaking her shirt, making it cling to her skin. Instinctively, she reached out to wipe away the sweat, only to suddenly see a pack of tissues extended before her. Except for my sister, I've never seen any girl who could run for two PE classes non-stop, Yi Feng said, while shaking off his sweat-soaked shirt, you're pretty hardcore, are you trying that hard just to get into the city laboratory school? No, she accepted the tissues, her cheeks burning, 
I don't want to get into the city laboratory school. Come on, I don't believe your long distance running grade is below the standard. You are obviously trying to get full marks. She lowered her head to wipe off her sweat and didn't argue further. There's nothing wrong with wanting to apply for the city laboratory school. Why can't you admit it? I also want to apply. What's more, I hope we can go together. The teenage boy blinked and smiled. His bright, clear eyes stunned her for a moment. Why do you want to go with me? She asked. Because currently, you seem to be the only one capable of getting in, and most importantly, I believe in you. Sure enough, this guy's mind was all about grades and abilities. She cursed in her heart. However, the joy that sprang up from within couldn't be easily suppressed. You mentioned your sister. Yes, my cousin. She's pretty insane. She's a grade above us and had her middle school education at the neighboring school. She got admitted to the city laboratory school last year due to her top score in the county-wide tests, which was even higher than the city's top scorer by four points. Is your sister dot 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 Wai Zhao? She suddenly recalled a rumor she heard back in her second year of junior high about a school beauty who resembled Liu Yifei and was entirely devoted to her studies. Do you know her? Yifeng's eyes lit up. No, I just heard about her. She laughed. She's like you, quite famous. Yifeng smirked. Cut it out, I dare not compare with her. You don't know, my family treats her like a deity. They say I only know how to play and have no serious demeanor. What's wrong with me playing? It doesn't hinder my studies, does it? Must I be a bookworm like her? Hey, why are you laughing? Nothing, Lin Zhu pursed her lips. I just didn't expect that you would feel sidelined by your family too. The boy shook his head helplessly. So, as they say, comparing oneself to others only leads to frustration. The afternoon sunshine of summer was blazing, seeping through the cloud gaps and warmly shone on them, casting their long shadows. She turned to look at him, eyed him curvy, and slowly spoke. She said, Yi Feng, let's go to the municipal experiment together. Let's go together. The two days of physical exams went smoothly, but what almost defeated Lin Zhu was the last event stand broad jump. She didn't know what was wrong with her. Each person had three chances and scored based on the longest jump. She had jumped twice already, neither of which passed. When she stood back on the board again, she felt as if her legs were going to soft. No matter how many times she practiced the start motion with both hands, she wouldn't dare to jump. The PE teacher's urging whistle sounded, and the fellow student's teasing or encouragement drilled into her ears, making her heart more and more disturbed. Some of her girlfriends yelled, Lin Zhu, go for it. Some boys in her class were enthusiastically watching the fun, whispering and laughing at her. There was even some student from another class sarcastically saying, Wow, the study holic can't even make the jump, you've studied your wit out, huh? Until a familiar voice, piercing through the noisy crowd, stably landed in her heart. Lin Zhu, you still want to go to the municipal experimental school, don't you? She followed the direction of the voice, staring at him blankly. The crowd around also turned towards him one after the other. Such an embarrassing ambition was abruptly disclosed by him. Maybe because his interrogative tone was straightforward, it made her feel less embarrassed and more courageous. Don't be scared, be confident, hurry up and jump. The boy stood not far away, holding a basketball in one hand, his smile was warm, and the gaze was gentle. The spark in her heart seemed to be ignited all of a sudden, she wasn't scared anymore. Inhale deeply, start, jump and land. When she crashed into the sand pit and heard the PE teacher exclaim one, Seven meters pass, the big rock hanging in her heart finally landed. She got up and peeked through the crowd to find his figure. From a distance, she saw him smile at her, then draped his arm over the shoulder of the boy next to him and said, Let's go, let's play basketball. His tall back figure, wearing a light blue jersey, slowly faded from her sight. Lin Zhu didn't know what her favorite color was. She didn't have a specific favorite color, thing, or person. After that day, however, she would always say that her favorite color is light blue when asked. That was the cleanest, brightest, and lightest color she had seen in her dull, burdening, and depressing student days. That was the favorite color of the person she liked.